feel like we've done a great, great job around here of teaching everybody the guts sales method. Guys, do you see how fucking simple this really is? Okay. You sound like a pro just going through this. Conversations. When we get on the phone, I feel like I feel like we've done a great, great job around here of teaching everybody the guts sales method. Everybody in this room could probably quote back to me if I said, how do we, what's the agenda section? You, you already know what the agenda section is. Uh, yeah, my name is Justin. I'm a landlord investor. I saw your property on Zillow. I thought I'd call you, ask you about making an offer on it today. I wanted to see if I could ask you a few questions. You could ask me a few, and if it's not a good fit, then you could tell me no. Okay, that would be the traditional role play ex example. Okay. I want to say this without it coming off wrong. Okay. I am very much so a guts salesperson. However, it will do you much good after. If you're one of those individuals who has soaked this into your brain and you've been doing this on the phone with people for a while, okay, you've been trying to stick true to the guts system, the guts formula. How about this? Divorce yourself from it for a little while. Divorce yourself from it for a week or two. Let me give you an example of how to start a phone conversation that's not so guts formulaic okay still gutsy just not formulaic okay meaning not the formula all right ring ring hello yeah my name is justin i just texted you just a little while ago about leasing your property out for 24 or 36 months and then selling at your asking price does that ring a bell with you <laughs> All right, what do you think about that? All right, how about this next? Yeah, he says, yeah, that was, I, I recognize you from the text. That was you, you sent the text? Oh yeah, that was me. I'm a landlord investor looking to make an offer on, on something like this today. What about this property do I need to know? Usually they'll say, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, what do you, I did this to it, or I, I fixed that, or this and such, or I've owned it for X amount of I don't care what it is. If they don't take the bait, I'll say, okay, can you tell me a little bit about the house before I make an offer? Isn't that a natural feeling question? We all wish we could just ask that, but we feel like our hands are tied because of the guts formula, Okay. <clears throat> it's not it's not ungutsy to say hey can you tell me a little bit about the property once they start talking about the property let them continue talking about the property for about 30 to 45 maybe even 60 seconds an entire minute then i want you to interrupt them <clears throat> i'm sorry excuse me mr homeowner I appreciate everything you're telling me right now, but you're now you're going to ask one of these follow-up questions, okay? I appreciate everything you're, you're you're sharing with me right now. It sounds like a very interesting deal. Why in the world would you be selling this? You might change the phrasing of that this looks like this seems like a cash cow mr landlord investor seller why in the world would you be selling this mr homeowner this house sounds wonderful this sounds perfect this house sounds flawless why not list it with a realtor okay we just 
took the elevator real deep, okay? If there's any depth to go to, we're going. And we've done it without the whole formula. Mr. Homeowner, I sent you the text. Yep, that's me. I'm an investor. I was going to make an offer today. Can you tell me about the property? What do I need to know about it? Blah, 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 blah. That sounds great, Mr. Homeowner. I can't believe you're selling it. Why would you be selling such a great property? <clears throat> okay. It's a great way to get into it. Why not just rent it out? Blah, 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 blah. Wait a minute, Mr. Homeowner. Why not just rent it out? Why not just list it with a realtor? Why would you sell such a cash cow? Why would you have such a beautiful house like this for sale? Why not live there longer? Now pop that why question. You're going to go deeper. Okay. <clears throat> this strategy, I find, gets them talking. You're going to get them talking about the house, talking about what they did, talking about how long they've lived there, talking about what this is and that is and all this. Tell me about the house. What is it that I need to know about the house before I make my offer? What should I know about the house before I make my offer, Mr. Homeowner? Tell me more about the house. Tell me about what's going on. He starts talking, 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 talking. 30, 30 seconds passes, 45 seconds passes. Now you interrupt him and redirect him. Interrupt and redirect, okay? Why now that you're talking? Why why are you selling? I I'm not sure I would. I'll even throw that in there. If I feel like that may be awkward, if I say why are you selling, I'll say why are you selling? I'm not sure I would. Well, you know, we kind of have to keep talking because we're in the flow. <clears throat> And that was such a non-threatening way to propose that. Okay. <clears throat> Try this. Get rid of the whole gutsy, gutsy formula of the, of the, I'll ask some questions. You ask me some questions. Okay. Honestly, do you think Claude does that when he gets on the phone with everybody every time? Hey, I'm Claude. I was calling because... I don't know what Claude. He's just like off. He's off the the formula, man. The formula is out the window when you when you listen to Claude. Yeah, Mister Homeowner, my uh, this is Claude. Why are we? Why am I calling you today? Okay, that's how he likes to do it. I I just shared with you a very easy conversational way to do it. Okay, so try that. But what I'm suggesting is, is divorce yourself from the formula a little bit. Grow up from the formula. The formula, remember, I always say it's for babies. Okay, formulas are for babies. You can't, you can't be a grown, full adult living off a formula. You need, you need meat. Right? So be, be the guts. Okay, be the guts. That's my point. Be the guts. All right. So I feel like that's the hardest part for us is getting the conversation going. We're always so damn fearful. Like as soon as we get into this conversation, I'm going to ask him this big ass question right off the top. <clears throat> How long have you lived there? and Why are you selling? <laughs> what if he totally blows up on me because I've had him blow up on me? Anybody ever have a homeowner blow up on you at that exact moment in the conversation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Try this instead. Yep, I'm the one that texted you. I'm a landlord investor. I wanted to talk about making an offer. What do I need to know about the house before I make my offer? What can you tell me about the property? You sound like fucking everybody else so far, too. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This I'm confused. This sounds like a wonderful house. Why in the world would you even sell it at all? I'm not sure I would. 
You see how non-threatening that is? Okay, try it. If you don't like it, go back to the formula, okay? <laughs> All right? <clears throat> I'm just saying, this is an easier way to break right into a conversation with somebody. Talking I about, about that. Justin. Yeah, go ahead, LaShonda. <clears throat> sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, depending on the seller, <clears throat> you won't even, or she won't even allow you to even get to any of that because they'll stop you in, in your tracks by saying all the information is already on there. They don't even want to tell you nothing. I have a. They tell you that is it's online. Everything that you need to know is online. Just make an offer or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I love to put people like that in my 30 day follow up. Okay, because they're just totally not the right stuff today. Right. You know what I mean? But they may loosen up for me. Um, you know, the reality. So how do you handle it? If, well, if you call me, if you call me and you say, yeah. <clears throat> well, can you tell me a little bit about the house? And I'll be like, well, everything is online. I have everything online, sir. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, I, I've addressed this question uh, before, and I, it, I've changed a little bit in how I do it. Um, before, I, I don't remember exactly how I shared this, but but what I've been doing recently is I've been trying to explain to them a little bit. I'm just like, hey, listen, you know, uh, I, I want to spend a lot of money. And so it makes me feel comfortable. I, I want to do something maybe even as quick as today. Um, so I feel more comfortable just kind of having a conversation with you, the owner, than I would just guessing off of what the internet may or may not say. So is that unreasonable and can we move forward or is this probably not for me? I, I, I want to kind of draw a line in the sand right there, you know. Um, I've even gone as far as before. I think what I said is, is, hey, you know, well, have you ever bought a used car? You know, you had the opportunity to talk to the previous owner. You definitely would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay. I have found that that shit doesn't work too good. I, I don't know. It's just not working for me, you know? So I'm just trying to be real adult about it and, and be like, hey, listen, you know, I want to spend a lot of money and I want to do it maybe even as quick as today. So it just makes me feel more comfortable if I can talk to you as the owner rather than just take information from the internet. Is this something that we can do or is this maybe just not a good time or is this over for me? Is this just not for me? Okay, there's a lot of scams out there. Maybe you should tell a homeowner, a homeowner that too. Hey, listen, I understand where you're coming from. I like to talk to people because, you know, nowadays there's just a lot of scammers out there. Okay. I don't know. I, nobody likes to be called a scammer. How come we never call the homeowner a scammer? <laughs> that would just we, piss them off. We only let them call us scammers. But, you know, but, but if a guy doesn't want to answer my questions, I, I might allude to him that, you know, I, you know I, I'd like to talk to you because I want to make sure that this isn't a scam because I want to spend a lot of money here. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like that's the hardest part for us is getting the conversation started up to and through the why question. OK, I just feel like that's the hard part. I also feel like the other hard part is. I'm going to share, this is where the cheat sheet comes in. I shared this a couple, two or three, four Wednesdays ago during the role play on Wednesdays. But I'm going to share it again here today. We're going to go over it. This is, this is another part of the conversation that's hard is how do we just, you know, we've been talking to the guy for five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And it's like, okay, well, how do we just ask for the fucking sale? You know, how do we ask for the deal? Like, how do we know we have it? You know, when do, can I send you the agreement, you know, or, are, am I ready to do that even? Or like, how do I know? Okay. Well, I think that's a good, good problem to have. Um, I, I've developed this little cheat sheet here to help you. And I'm going to share this with everybody. So um, I'm going to put this in the chat. And I want you guys to, to have this. 
printed out. It's only two pages long. And you can reference it until it becomes part of you. Okay. But this is a two-step scenario. A two-step scenario when you start talking about questions and objections and wanting to know if it's getting close to the, the closing time in the conversation. All right. And usually my closing question is this. <clears throat> There's a setup question and there's a closing question. Okay, the big closing question is always something like this. If I put that in our agreement today, does that make you comfortable enough to move forward with me today? You see, I'm using today, 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 today. Hey, hey, I'm calling you today about this house I saw on Zillow. I want to talk about making an offer today. Like, we, shit, we ain't talking about next week, next month. Okay, I'm hypnotically dropping it in there too, you know, just dropping it in there today every chance i get today you know like hey we, you know the best time to do anything is today right mr homeowner if i put that in our agreement today does that make you comfortable enough to move forward with me today if he says yes then what do i want to do please someone help me you have to send him the contract write it up get the terms. yeah yeah if i ask the question if i put that in our agreement today does that make you comfortable enough to move forward with me today if he says yes then i need to get his damn email address mm -hmm. and put that fucking contract together mm -hmm. <laughs> right okay so now you see why i say that's always the closing question now how do i arrive at that though okay here's how i arrive at it the setup questions and there's a number of setup questions that i'll use if you wanted to, you could use this setup question list as an entire, with what I just taught you about how to start the conversation, that and this right here, you could use this as a, as a, uh, as a script cheat sheet, and you could do the entire damn conversation with nothing but these two documents. Well, not, not these two documents, this document and the, the opening that we just went over. Okay, so setup questions lead to this question, okay? So I'm going to ask a setup question, and then I'm going to ask this question. If I put that in our agreement today, does that make you feel comfortable enough to move forward with me today? So the setup questions are as follows, and not in any particular order, okay? Number one, I can tell that selling your home to the right person is important to you. Why does it mean so much? Maybe that's one of the very first questions you ask. When you get the answer, no matter what it is, I want you to say, if I put that in our agreement today, does that make you comfortable enough to move forward with me today? Okay. I, do you see the flow here? Set up, closing. Set up, closing. Okay. So, you're going to ask a setup question. The homeowner is going to respond. I don't care what they say. I want you to follow up with the closing question. Okay. This is how you work towards a, a, a contract here. The homeowner is making complaints. He's, he's throwing up objections. Mr. Homeowner says, I don't know if I like this because I don't know if the tenant buyer is going to do this and such. I don't know if I, I don't know. I, I, I like it this way, but I don't like it this way. Mr. Homeowner, why do you feel that way? Let him answer. When he's done, Mr. Homeowner, if I put that in our agreement today, what you just said, does that make you comfortable enough to move forward with me today? All right. Are you following me? Everybody following this? The setup and the closing. Number three. Why is this topic so important to you? When they give you the answer, okay, great. If I put that in our agreement today. Number four, I'd like to put all these things. You got to really put, catch this one, guys. This is, I love this one. This one's my favorite. I'd like to put all these things that are important to you in my offer, Mr. Homeowner. What else do I need to know to understand better? Whatever he says. What am I going to say? Somebody tell me what's my next, what's the next words falling out of my face? If I was to put that in the agreement. <laughs> if I was to put that in the agreement today. Does that make you feel comfortable enough to move forward with me today? Mr. Homeowner, you know, all these concerns and issues and all this stuff. 
I'd like to put all this, all these things that are important to you in my offer. What else do I need to know to understand? That's almost like, tell me about the property. What do I need to know? What do I need to know to make an offer on this property today? What should I know? Mr. Homeowner, I'd like to put everything important to you in my offer today. What do I need to know to understand better? Whatever he says. Okay, Mr. Homeowner, if I put that in the agreement today, does that make you comfortable enough to move forward? No, he has another thing he needs to talk about. Great, let's, fl let's slip on down. He, he says, no, I, I've got this other objection. Okay, well, Mr. Homeowner, what would I have to change for this to work for you? And then he's going to respond. And then what do I say? <laughs> if I was to put that in the agreement. <laughs> if I was to put that in the agreement. Does that make you feel today? Does that make you feel comfortable enough to move forward with me today? Okay. No, he has another fucking objection. Oh my God. This guy is nonstop. He's the energizer bunny of objections. What would you say if I said I could handle all that, Mr. Homeowner, and I'm okay with what you need? If I put that in the agreement today, does that make you feel more comfortable? And can we move forward today? Guys, do you see how fucking simple this really is? Okay. You sound like a pro just going through this. Just going through this. You, like, how can you not close these people? Number seven, I'm confused. Can you tell me more about that? Could you tell me that again? Number eight, what has led you to feel that way about this? Number nine, have you had a bad experience with something like this before? Okay. When was the last time someone offered you full price? God, what a great opening question. Mr. Homeowner, get this shit, right? Mr. Homeowner, I'm the guy that sent you the text message. Yeah, my name's Justin. Uh -huh, I sent you the text message about leasing your property uh, for 24 to 36 months and then asking, uh, then, then paying full price for it, your asking price. Uh, yeah, that was me. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm glad to talk to you. Hey, um, being a landlord investor, I, I'd like to make an offer today. Uh, when was the last time somebody made you a full price offer? <laughs> what a great way to start the conversation. Well, if I put full price offer on the contract here, the full price, does that make you comfortable enough when we move forward today? This works. You can just manipulate the whole conversation from start to finish with this list of questions. Okay. It, like I said, in no particular order, because you can't get them in an order because every homeowner is going to be different. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now let's go on. Let's, I'm just going to go finish reading through these just because I get, I get fucking pumped when I read this. What would make this work better for you, Mr. Homeowner? What would make this work better for you? Okay. If I put that in the agreement today, does that make you feel more comfortable to move forward with me today? Okay, number 12, if we went ahead with this, what would be the worst thing that could happen? Mm. Well, he's really on the fence. Mm. God, he's on the fence. What do we do? Well, if we went ahead with this, what would be the worst thing that could happen, Mr. Homer? Well, this could fucking happen and this could happen. Well, Mr. Homer, if I put it in the agreement, does that make you feel more comfortable? Okay. Number 13, I'm hearing you saying this, but I'm also hearing something else. Could you explain? Number 14, if you don't sell your house to me today, how are you going to change your results? Okay, I don't use that one very much. I don't use that one very much, but it's worth having in there. Number 15, if I design this offer to fix your exact issue, do we have a deal? See, number 15 will only work if your homeowner has an issue. So you might not want to use that, okay? Because his exact issue might be out of your purview, okay? <laughs> he might have some more uh, in-depth help he needs. All right, number 16. I see where you're coming from, Mr. Homeowner. How'd you arrive at feeling that way about this? And what, le what leads you to think that? 
okay, great. If I put that in the agreement today, does that make you feel more comfortable? And <laughs> can we move forward today? Okay. If I were able to make that work, number 17, if I were able to make that work, what, what would it mean to you? Okay, well, if I put that in the agreement today, would that make you comfortable enough to move forward with me today? Okay, number 18, if I were to sweeten the deal with this, maybe you fill in the blank here, give them an extra thing. Hey, if I were to sweeten the deal with this, would that be enough for you to move on this with me today? Eh, that's kind of worded funky. That's a good one if you've got a silver bullet. Number 18 is the silver bullet one, right? Give them that extra thing. Mr. Homeowner, if I were to sweeten the deal and give you an extra $2,500 non-refundable on the front end, like when, when we exchange keys, you get $2,500 that day. Is that, would that be enough for you to move forward with me on this today? Okay, you see how that's number 18. Uh, okay, Mr. Homeowner, well, if I put that in the agreement today, is that enough to make you feel comfortable to move forward with me today? Okay. Number 19, what if that weren't true, Mr. Homeowner, and I could make it better? What would you say about that? God, I feel like I need to go say that to my wife right now. Honey, what if that weren't true and I could make it better? What if it weren't true that I was a complete asshole yesterday? <laughs> and I could make it better. What would you say about that? Okay. Well, if I put that in the agreement today, sweetie, does that make you comfortable enough to continue staying married to me? <laughs> All right. I'm just suggesting use some of these things in your regular day-to-day -day life as well. All right. They're great, great questions. If you want the answers to life, get infatuated with asking questions. Okay. These are some great questions to start with. I could use a lot of these in a lot of different ways. So print them out, marinate them, you know, get your brain marinated in them. Okay. What if that weren't true and I could make it better, honey? Mm. <laughs> All right. So now you should feel more confident starting the conversation and you should feel more confident in the flow and how when they ask, when they throw these objections and stuff at you, a lot of times you can just redirect it by just asking one of these questions, set them up and then let them say whatever they're going to say and then just throw in that closing question. But Justin, what if what they're saying is unfucking reasonable? I don't care. I don't care, to be honest with you. I really don't. What my goal is, is to find out what he'll sign with me today. Now, once I find that out, once I have him saying yes to whatever that is, now the decision's up to me, isn't it? Now I'm going to go do a little property valuation. I'm going to go see what's going on. Oh, yeah, this deal's bogus. I'm not going to send a contract to that guy. Forget it. Change my mind. Okay. I like it being left up to me. I'll give you an example. I was on a one-on-one -on -one call Friday. This guy, he has a, he's a one-on-one -on -one student of mine. He had a lead. He was like, Hey, let's call this lead. Uh, can't remember where it was. It was like in Alabama or something. Montgomery, Montgomery, Alabama. I think, I don't know. <laughs> I get leads confused, but anyway, he wanted to make a call together. He wanted me to call someone and show him how I do it. So. That's where some of these ideas came. I was like, well, you know, actually, let me break down how I do this opening a lot. Because so that's what I just did for you guys. I broke it down a little bit for you. Now, we got to the end of the call. The guy was like, yes, that's we'll do it. Send me the agreement. And I was like, okay, cool. I got all the information I needed. Got his email address. I said, okay, Timothy, Timothy Burke at 
hotmail.com. Uh, I got all the information I need. Okay, I'll get an agreement over to you and we'll talk. I confirm, confirm, confirm when we're going to talk again. Okay, great. Bye bye. Click. I put prop stream on. I was like, uh, you know, it's an ugly house deal. Uh, it's like, it's like it could be an Airbnb, but more, more like it could be like a crack house. Okay. Like it's Airbnb. If you're like, if you have cash customers only, you know what I mean? Like there's no app required for this fucker. Like you just need like $20. <laughs> It was like, it was a strange deal, okay? Shit's weird. I already told the guy, yes, I was going to send him in a contract. I was like, nah, I changed my mind. Changed my mind. Oh. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack.